Well, good morning, y'all. How y'all are this morning? This is just kind of a quick update. Uh, yesterday, I got a phone call, and my daughter, she's moving. Uh, we live in Trinidad right now, and uh, she has a friend of hers that, that had a this house. It's over in uh, Valdez, uh, Colorado, which is about, I don't know, about maybe eight or ten miles west of here. It's uh, just past Cokedale there. And uh, so anyway, she called me up. She says, uh, Dad, I'm, I'm up here by myself. If you want to come up. And uh, I said, yeah, I'd like that. She said, well, just come to Valdez, and there's a store there, and call me from there, and, and uh, I'll tell you how to get up here. Because she didn't have, I guess somebody took her up there and dropped her off. I said, okay. Well, anyway, I got to Valdez, and I pulled in this convenience store, and once you know, my, my phone wouldn't catch any reception. So I thought, oh, great, now what do I do? So I just kept on going to the next little town. There was a store there. And I walked in, and uh, it, it was kind of nostalgic because it kind of reminded me of the, the old stores back in, in Louisiana, how they used to be. <coughs> Looked like an old-timey country store, you know. So... Uh, I talked to this lady, she was real nice, and I told her, I said, ma'am, my, my cell phone won't work up here. Do you have a, a landline I can use? She said, yeah. So she dialed the number and uh, gave me the phone. I talked to my daughter and told her where I was at, and she wasn't really familiar with the area, so. She tried, she was going to give me directions on how to get there. And I said, well, here, let me let you talk to this lady. She knows the area, and then she can tell me. Okay, well, uh, she got on the phone, and, and they was on the phone with about 10, 15 minutes. She got off. She said, this is really complicated. She said, you go back to Valdez. And uh, she said, you go on past the store, and there'll be some mailboxes and this and that, and you take a, right, take a left, and you go up in there and follow this road around. And uh, So I tried. She said, you pass the bridge, and then right, right past the bridge is the mailbox. So well, I turned at the mailbox. Went up there. It was, in a, pri it was a private uh house. So I thought, well, that ain't it. So I went back to the highway and went to the next one. Up there and drove around and swerved and little old dirt roads got narrow and I thought I was going to slip off and fall in the, the gullies and and I finally couldn't find it. I turned around went back and tried another one, same thing. And uh, so finally, I ended up going back to the store. And I said, ma'am, I said, I can't find this place. So there happened to be an old boy in there. And he said, well, yeah, you go up the store here and you take a right there. That's that road right next to the store. And I said, oh, well, the way she gave me directions, I would stay on 12 and pass the store. She said, no, no, no. So she, uh, we misunderstood. So anyway, he gave me the directions. And uh, so it's it really complicated because you go down a road and it comes to a T and you go one way to go into Valdez and you go straight and it goes up to where there's a water, water tank where people fill their water tanks. And, or you can turn left and there's two roads. A high road and a ro low road. Well, she told me high road, but I, you know, I, 
I went in and I asked the guy filling the water tank, and he said, yeah, that, that's the road you need, that, that first one there. So I got on this road, and I'm going, and I'm going, and I'm going. And that gal told me, she said, well, you're going to think you're lost, but, you know, just keep going, and eventually you get there. So uh, I got this one point, and it was a pretty good incline, and it'd been snowing up there, so it was pretty slick. And my old, I got a little big old Isuzu pickup, and I get to go, bleh, bleh, bleh. and I'm thinking, oh, shit, I ain't going to make it up this damn hill. Well, luckily, there was patches that was melted off. So I was kind of snaking my way back and forth and hitting patches so I could go a little bit further. And I finally, I got up and, and I looked off and I, I went clear to the end of the road and there wasn't nothing there. I thought, what's so good? So I said, well, I seen a house back there. Maybe that's it. So I went back and I drove down in there and, uh, I didn't know, I didn't recognize the dogs out in the yard. So I, I tried my phone and luckily my reception worked there. So I called my daughter and I said, I said, look, I'm up here lost. She said, well, I kind of figured that. And I, she said, where are you at? And I said, I'm at this big old red house. It looks like a barn. And I explained it to her. She said, you're, you're in my front yard. She says, I'm on the same property. I'm just down the road a little bit. She says, I can see that place from my house. So she tried to tell me how to, she says, go back to the road, take a left, go to the next driveway and take a, take another left. So I finally found the house. And I'm going to go back up there tomorrow and I'm going to try and take my other camera and and uh, get you some uh, shots of the area. I mean, it is breathtaking up there, people. I mean, where her where her house sitting, and she's got a it's got central heating in it, but it's also got a fireplace. She's up there painting because the walls were all sooty and shit like that. And apparently, the guy had been just renting it out for like a deer camp or something. And uh, because he told her when uh, she he rented it to her that there was absolutely no hunting up there because he owns like 60-some acres up there and it's prime deer and elk hunt. And so he leases his land out every hunting season to this hunting club to go up there and, and uh, hunt deer and, and elk on and there's bears and all that kind of bullshit. But anyway, her bedroom window, man, beautiful view, just right out of her bedroom window, you know. It's looking down in this kind of valley, and there's a mountain over here, and just just breathtaking. So she wants me to bring my trailer up there and park it there in her yard that she said you can work on it you know here and uh well i told her she said was well, it isn't livable and i said yeah I, I could live in it temporarily you know until summertime but i still got four or five months left on my lease here so uh that's the plan i'm going to uh i paid my lot rent uh so I got till the end of this month to move it. But I'm going to uh, take my trailer up there and I got to talk to my landlord and see if they can, they'll let me out of this lease. Uh, maybe they will, maybe they won't. I don't know. Ben's only got four months left on it. So if they do, Fine, I can move up there and just live in my little trailer. But I told her, I said, what I'd rather do is is wait till around April when my lease is up. 
That way it's going to be warm and I can work on my trailer and live in it at the same time. Because i got to take the back end of, of it off. And uh, that's where the majority of the work's going to be at. But, uh, you know, I, I've got to take the, the skin off the back and take take the skin off the uh, part of the, the roof. Take the air conditioner off of it and do a bunch of work to it. But anyway, uh, I can still use the front of the trailer, you know, to to sleep in. I'll still have the kitchen there to, to, uh, for that part of it. So that's my plans on that deal. But like I say, tomorrow I'm going to go go back up there. She's going to have uh, a get together up there. They're going to do some painting and and some other stuff. And <clears throat> I'll probably just kind of check the the area out, and see where I want to put my trailer, and first one thing another. So uh, uh, look forward to some vids about that. And like I said, it's it's just breathtaking up there. And she t she talked to the guy, you know, she went to school with him, and he said, yeah, he said, uh, you can't hunt up here because I, I lease it out to the hunters. And, I, and she, he said, I would suggest that you get a, like a 20-gauge shotgun and get some bird shot in it. She said, because there are going to be, like, coyotes and first one thing and another, uh, coming around and you need something. She said, he said, I don't want you killing nothing. Just, you know, just pop them in the butt and, and scare them away. Now I can't, you know, she said you can't kill coyotes and, and, uh, first one thing, thing another. And I, I told her, I said, well, ask the guy if, you know, how about turkeys? Because there's turkeys up there too. Because he he just don't want to kill deer or elk, so or bear or anything like that. So uh, I got to find out if I can kill a turkey up there. And because uh, I got this uh, this little twenty two with scope on it, and I can you know, so I, I'll be able to pop a a turkey from a pretty good distance. Uh. So anyway, yeah, uh, I'm gonna make a video tomorrow uh, when I go up there, and hopefully that little camera of mine's got enough space on it, you know. So uh, okay, well y'all, I just uh, want to give an update there. Y'all take care and stay warm, and uh, God bless y'all. Love y'all. Y'all have a good day now. Bye bye.